Hey, 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 terrific Tuesday. Welcome to Relationship Rhetoric. I'm your host, unapologetically, Angela. Thank you so much for joining me. So I was so elated and excited to um, celebrate the month of April, talking to parents and their children. And now we're back in our stride. Another one of my elements that I truly, truly love is people and their sensuality and their sexuality and what they do to keep things spicy, what they do or what people do. You're not necessarily a couple, but what people do to... Uh, keep their sex drive up and feeling sensual and feeling sex. You know, there's always a taboo around people, you know, wanting to do things and to experiment and to invite things into their uh, sex lives or into their sensuality. So the lady that we're going to talk to today, I can't even remember how I met her. So we'll figure that out when we talk. But, um, you know, I've always wondered how people get in the business. They're always asking me, how did you get to having these events. You're a mom, you're this, you're that. That's just a small fraction of who we are as women. And so I think it's very empowering to be able to be a woman, to be in a place, to be able to step outside of the box of what people feel like is appropriate for us to discuss and to talk about and still be professional, still be great moms, still be great wives, girlfriends, and partners and things of that nature. So that was one of the reasons why I chose her because her grind is about as thick as mine. And she's out here trying to not only provide um, alternatives, but also educating in the process. And she's married. So I'm very interested to hear about how her and her husband um, deal with the business that she's in. Um, <clears throat> I hope that everyone has had a wonderful day. I have been on my grind again. In, in case you don't know, I have just published a children's book and it is making great strides to get into the hands of all the children that are in Shelby County schools. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and that's another reason why typically when I do invite people on the show, I do invite people that have a hustle, that have a small business, that have um, something that they need to get out and a platform where they are able to share what it is they do outside of being in corporate America. So again, that was one of the reasons why I chose to speak to this young lady. I think she was having some technical difficulties, but I think we back in. The, we ready. All right. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the madam, Tanya Gilmore Bowie. Hey. 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 Okay. You, you hearing me better now? We good? Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah. these devices, honey. One phone call, one strike of lightning, and it's over. Right. So, I get, I get it. so let's do this first. Do you remember how we met? You do? Okay. Is I have an memory? elephant memory. <laughs> I have an elephant memory. Okay, so tell me, how did we meet? We met when uh, Omandeli was having a we were doing another event together and somebody okay. else opened up there. Um, she was opening up her shop, her new popcorn shop. And you were the host for her popcorn shop. You were all green. I was and green. Her, I yeah, was and green. then I came in and I was green. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> for green popcorn. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So then we realized, realized we got some kindred spirit going on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I like it. I then like it. You show, then you did a couple of shows and I was there. So I was like, every time Angela had something, I'm going. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that helps. That I knew I knew it involved her. I just couldn't remember how. Okay. So just give us, give me, give us a little background about who you are. Are you from Memphis? Um, your life prior to being married, prior to children, prior to your business. Who is Tanya? Okay. Um, well, yes, I I am from Memphis. Um, I was a single, well, have been a single mom of two until I got married. Um, I've always worked in the medical field, believe it or not. And also, um, yeah, I was always in the medical field. And I've always did seeing their work or taking, or I had my own business at one point of doing home health care. And then I went back into the hospital because 
insurance was not working for me that well trying to do home health, but it still was good money and I love my patients. Um, but prior to that, um, I'm just an ordinary Joe. Nobody, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm special. I mean, of course, but I mean, I was just, that was it. I was a mom. I had a son. Then all of a sudden, eight years later, I had a daughter. And then mm -hmm, eight years later, <laughs> then I had a daughter and um, I was just a working mom, a working everyday mom, just trying to make it. So prior to um, so prior to getting started into the business, um, um, I, I well, you know what? I've always I've always they say been a wild one, but as I've gotten older, believe it or not, I'm so not wild anymore. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but that's not the question you asked about. Like I was going to say, tell you how I came into the business, but that's not what you asked right now. So yeah, I've just okay. been a single mom and working. Okay, so tell me this: who tell me about the mom that just was the mother of Donovan? How was your personality then? What were you doing? The mother of Donovan was 21. Okay. And, and kind of not, I want, I'm not going to say I was mad, but I was 21 and still wanted to be 21 with a baby. That's right. Get it. I get it. I, I still was 21 and wanted to go to the club. I still was mm -hmm. 21 and was, I was, I was like, okay. Look, I was staying with my mom at one point. I was doing her wrong. I was like, hey, she sleep. I put the baby on her side. She sleep. I'm going to sneak out. Everybody ought to be good by the time I get home. <laughs> <laughs> Don't act like y'all ain't being the so, <laughs> so, and then I, um, but uh, the mother of Donovan, I knew that I didn't want, uh, I wanted him to have everything. I wanted him to have the best. Probably was wrong with his butt now, but I, I did. I wanted him to have like the best schools. I knew I wanted him to be educated. That was mm -hmm. my, I don't know where it came from or I, I never was like, I want him to be a rapper or I wanted him to be a doctor. I just wanted him to be educated. Right. So I called myself trying my best to find the best daycares. Like when I, they started calling me bougie because I was like, I didn't like his, I don't like this this because of this daycare. I don't like this because of that. And it wasn't the people. It was just the curriculum or the way they had things uh, settled or whatever. So um, I was real particular about where he went and how he was taught. Okay. So that was my thing with both of them, actually. I wanted them. Education was like they had to be. And I, 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 you know, that whole misconception of you trying to make your kids white. No, I'm trying to make them educate. That's so right. I want them to learn. You know, I want them to. And and my son, they would like call him a nerd because he he did. He had his little. He was always on. Both of them were always on, on the road. Or always. Um, they love both of them, but especially my daughter. She loves books. He like um at the time. He like comic book type stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I, that was a big thing to make me, yeah. And then okay. I calmed down. Okay, because that was the next question. So eight years later, mm -hmm. here the daughter comes. What is the difference in Tanya then and then Tanya eight years later? Tanya is almost, if I wasn't 31, 30s, and I was like, Look here, you got two. You got to get it together. <laughs> you have to get it together. I didn't want to be on nobody's system for so long. I did try. You know, I went down there to DHS so they can help me with daycare because that, that was a big thing. But I also knew I had to start while I'm trying to get them educated. I needed to educate myself. That's right. So, right. So, like, um, I started, like, with classes. They had, like... Um, um, CNA classes and they had so and so classes. So I was like, I need, even though people say it's something and don't do this and don't do that, I don't listen to that because that piece of paper, I can get a job anywhere. And I was making good money and I was holding it down and I was stable. That was yeah. my biggest thing. I was like, I have to be stable because I, I had got to the point where uh, I was moving. I had started moving because I was like, I'm not going to get on my parents' nerves. I'm just going to keep moving from apartment to apartment or whatever. And or um, 
and I'm going to do this and do that. And I was like, and my, my son told me one day, I'd be glad when we have our own spot. I'm tired of moving. Yeah. That hurt my feelings so bad. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, you know, let, let me get stable. So I started from CNA. Um, because I worked in a hospital, but at the time I didn't have to. I, I worked in a hospital for about almost twelve years and never had to um, have a, a, a um, what am I trying to say a diploma or degree or anything. They yeah. just hired me on. But then when I tried this time, everybody needed paper of some sort, so I did. I started my CNA class. I passed it. I, I went to a nursing home. Then I went to a hospital, which was better. I went from nursing home paid to hospital paid. And that was way more better. And then I was like, you know what? I got this little girl. She's mimicking everything. This little boy, he just loves me. This little girl, she loves me. And she's mimicking everything I do. Everything. Mm -hmm. From trying to put on a bra at the age of two. From <laughs> I have to pull my eyelashes off. I look over. She got them on her forehead. I never forget. So, And I was like, so um, they offered another class. My job. Uh, well, actually, it was a friend girl of mine at my job, and she was telling me about these classes that Southwest was um, Southwest was giving basically away, as long as you stayed in a certain area. Well, I I did it, so now I am a dialysis technician. Wow! So, okay. so now I went from CNA to a dialysis technician, and so. That wasn't, I mean, that I'm still that, and I was like, well, so that's where I am now. So I've been considering nursing school, but I'm just like, ooh, that's a. <laughs> so my next step is nursing school, or I'm just going to step all the way into my business. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about your husband. How did you all meet? <laughs> I hated him. <laughs> Really? I do not stand him for I, Oh my goodness. We actually, our first time meeting was in a nursing home. I wish he was here. He's at work now. But our first time meeting was in a nursing home. And I was trying to ask him, does, are you at home? I was, <laughs> I was trying to ask him, did he need um, a sheet to go for my patient? And he assumed that I was trying to talk to him and, and shot me down. He was like, hey, get away. He was like, I got a girlfriend. I was like, I don't care about you getting no girlfriend. So when I saw him, and but to behold, I don't think I never told him this. He was so fine to me when I saw him that day. <laughs> but, baby, no, he would never, ever get the satisfaction. So speed it up. Um, I told you I became a dialysis technician. And I got hired at a dialysis clinic. So at this dialysis clinic, he um, he does patient transportation. And Lord and behold, who I see, he comes up. Not one time, not two times, but three or four times. So I never mm -hmm. said anything to him. I saw him in this particular time, because they would come in and they would be laughing and joking and stuff with people. In this particular time, I would be like, he said something to me, and I was like, I know who you are. You don't remember me. I remember you from the nursing home. He was like, I knew you looked familiar. And I was like, yeah, remember you told me you had a girlfriend, and her name was this, that, and the other. And I was like, all right, give me my patience so I could go put him on the machine. <laughs> so he was just like, so from then on, he would kind of say little stuff to me, and I just look at him like he was slow. I was just like, and you had the news to keep talking to me. I was just like, quit talking to me. And he would keep, he would I mean, kept on, and I would just look at him like he was crazy. I would, I would be so rude. Oh my God, I was so rude. I don't even know why he still kept trying to talk to me. And so this one particular time, it was the summertime, and our air was on, but our water machine and our ice machine had went out at work. So it and we and we sweating, and we don't have any water. So. He said something to me and I told him, so I rolled my neck and sat there in front of everybody. So now, I mean, it's so it's so quiet. Everybody's paying attention to the conversation that we're having. So I basically told him, look, if you want to talk to me, all I want is a cup of ice. That's all I want. I want a cup of ice. I'm thirsty. We over here hot. I want a cup of ice. And he said, I never forget it. 
So, and even the security guard at the time, she was like, he ain't gonna bring you no ice bag. I was like, I already know it. And everybody was like, girl, he ain't gonna bring you no ice bag. I was like, I already know it. So he left. And when he came back, I have never seen this big ass cup of ice he's ever had. <laughs> this cup of ice, he have not seen this cup of ice anymore. It was like a 64 ounce cup and it was full of ice. And he said, because he when he before he left, he said, That's all you want. I was like, Yeah, I'm thirsty, I'm hot. And so the lady was like, uh, he brought it back and he came, he had a straw, and he was like, I got I got you what you asked for. And I couldn't say nothing. My mouth dropped. I couldn't say nothing. And the lady was like, um, and then he really made my heart smile. The lady was like, You didn't bring me no ice. He said you didn't ask for any ice. She did. Mm. So I was like, <laughs> And he kept saying, I'm <laughs> he said, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. And I kept saying, No, you're not, no, you're not. So eventually he I gave we exchanged numbers eventually, but I never called him. And then this one particular time I did call him because hey, at the time I was living so far, I stayed 45 minutes from my job home, driving home, and I would get off at like nine o'clock at night, nine or ten. So I'm tired. So I was like, I called him. I was like, hey, can we just have a conversation and talk? Because I'm tired and I need somebody to talk to on the way home. And so we did. And we had a great conversation. We had a really good conversation. We really, really did. And even though we did have a good conversation, I didn't call him back <laughs> for about a week or two. <sighs> okay. and, and he asked me to go to dinner. And I said, the conversation was really great. And I liked the conversation because he never said anything sexual. He never said, you thick or, oh, you you so pretty or nothing. He never said any, any of that. That was my first ding ding. And then my uh, second one was, he asked me to dinner. And I was like, well, where can we meet? And he was like, well, I know you got your children and I don't want you to go far. It's already late. I'm going to come to Milliton where I was living. He said, I'm going to come to Milliton. And when I come to Milliton, so you won't have to drive far home. I don't want you to have to drive far home in the dark. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was still denying it, though. I was like, mm -mm. my mama had to get on me about him, though. My mama. Yeah, that conversation. My mama. Uh, like, well, mama approved? Yes, and she never called me in the morning. Mama, I'm just going to tell you that right quick. So I was liking him and liking him. And then I was liking him to the point I was like, because I hadn't been with anybody for three years. I hadn't had sex with anybody for three years. So I was like, I, di I didn't want that. So, um, and my thing was about it was with me with sex is like, people say, oh, you could just have sex and not do. But I was like, I can't. I get attached. I don't want to get attached. I have a daughter. I I, I know that I, I really do. I was fasting for a husband, actually. And um, I was just like, or a companion that I didn't, I didn't want that. So I hadn't had anybody for a long time. And so afterwards, uh, afterwards, I was liking him, and then I was pushing him away. And then he still ended up meeting my mom. And then he's missing a tooth in the front. And my mom, and just so I was like, Mama, I don't like him. I don't like him. And my mama said, Wait a minute, wait a minute. He has his own car. He has a he has two jobs. He's working Lyft or something. He has two jobs. He got his own place and he don't have any kids. And he is where he love he he I could just see him. You got his nose wide open. And she said, So what is the problem? I was like, Mama, he ain't got no tooth in his front of his mouth. He ain't got no tooth. I don't like him. My mama said, Girl, you could go to the dollar store and buy him some teeth. If that's all you worry about. That man ain't doing nothing to you. He like you. I ain't saying he be no nothing. I was like, Mama, really? She's like, Yeah, you can go to the dollar store and buy him some tea. If that's all you worried about, girl, do you see your dad and you see how wide his teeth was? I was like, Yeah, I see how wide daddy's teeth was. I was like, But he had them. She's like, Girl, please. So I was like, um, He's coming in now. Say hey. <laughs> Hey, yeah, she's talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> he just come in. So he's um so um he was like uh she was like, I'm gonna tell you something. She was like, Don't let your good thing go to waste. She was like, it's something about him that I like. 
She called me at 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. She said, We need to talk because I don't want you. And she told me, My mama said, If you're going to take your past, her that on him, leave him alone. Mm. Leave him alone. She told me, Leave me alone. Leave him alone. And if, um, and if I like him, treat him right. Don't be mean to him. So mm. I said, Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, <laughs> and she was mean from day one. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. So, how long have you all been married? We've been married for a year. It'll be two years this September. Yes, been. That. Oh my goodness, your chemistry is like y'all been together for so long. <laughs> Oh, I love Everybody it. Say that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, had you begun your business when you and him got, no, I, I always have to ask this question. Tell me about the proposal. No! I hated my proposal. <laughs> I'm so glad he's here. We're going to get all the background comments. <laughs> he's yours, my father. No! <laughs> Actually, you were in my proposal. He proposed to me, yes, November the 9th. That was the day you had your program, and I was there. And I was running out the door. I was like, hey, I got to go meet her. She told me to come at 7. I'm changing my pants. I went and bought me some pants. And I was like, look, babe, I got to change. He was like, you coming home? I was like, yeah, but I'm in a rush. I got to meet Angela. Angela told me to be there at 7. And I'm feeling ready to go. He was like, well, just wait. And I was like, I don't have time to wait. Like, literally, my shirt, my hand was in my shirt. I was like, I don't have time. I'm, I'm getting ready to go. I got my shoes in my hand. I'm like, look. I was like, did you put my stuff in the truck? And he was like, here are this card. And I was like, because I remember we had kind of got into it, but we, we just had a spat. And I was like, oh, he's giving me a card about a spat. And I worried about it. He was like, read it. And I was like, I am, look, I'm like this. I'm trying to go and I was like so and he was like and so when I'm reading it and I look up he's sweating hard as I don't know what he got <laughs> mind you we just moved we had boxes everywhere and he's looking at me slow and I was like what are you looking at me for and he was like well and I because I have read the card and I read it back and I was like you asking me to marry you and he was like he was just sweating and looking at me slow and I was like yeah, I guess. I was like, okay. And I was like, well, I got to go because <laughs> I got to go to Angela's. Oh, no. No, don't I me. Like, I got to go. I was like, I got to go. So that night I got engaged and I was looking at my ring and I was trying to pay attention. And I was like, yeah, that's Saturday. Mm hmm. <laughs> the first. <laughs> yeah. Damn, yeah. <laughs> we, didn't know. we didn't know. We didn't know. I didn't know. Oh, I didn't wow. either. I, and I was like, why didn't you wait till Sunday when we had time? I could kind of ooh and ah. Uh, I was just, it was, it was, yeah. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that helps me with the next question. So your business, you were already in your business or had established your business before you all got married. Okay, mm -hmm. so talk to me about how you got into what you do and then explain what it is you do. <laughs> well, actually, I had, um, before him, I had a boyfriend that was, he was just a business bitch of a person. And so he had all these boxes in his house. And so one day I opened up a box. What the heck is all of this stuff? And I saw that they were sex toys. And I was like, that's what I get to be I was like, that's what I get to be in But he had prices on them and stuff. And he used to go to um, the clubs and stuff and sell, set up and sell and stuff of that nature. So I was like, okay. So one day he was like, why won't you try it? Excuse me. So I was like, um, no. And so, but I used to tell, <laughs> I was telling like some of my friends about it. And I was like, oh, girl, you got this, blah, blah. I was like, I'm a thing with a guy. I don't know what it is. You know, so I had started taking stuff out of the box. 
and saying, hey, you know, I was getting stuff. And then it just grew. Now people at work saying, she the lady that say all that stuff. And they will pull me over or catch me when I go to my car. And then so I started bringing stuff to work and put it in my trunk. And so then he ordered me like two big boxes and was like, go. He was like, get a taste of it. And I was like, <laughs> like it was a drug. And so I never forget this lady had asked me. She was like, do you do fun parties? And I was like, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, I, I do them. I do them. I, I ain't never did. She was like, well, how much do you charge? And I was like, oh, thirty dollars. Now I'm just in there. I'm like, I just charge gas money. I just charge gas money. I don't do that now. So I was like, I just charge gas money. And so I came and went to her party. I mean, she had. A, I was at a bridal shower, and when I was at a bridal shower, I just loved it. I just, I went, I had gangs already uh, together. Of course, I'm a talker and uh, I'm grateful that I do have a gift to gab. But um, other than that, that's how I really started <laughs> in it. Okay. I, I, it was just, it just kind of fell in my lap. Okay. Okay. So, so at what point in the business did you realize, oh, I got to put a cost to this because gas money is not going to get it? When people start to take advantage of you, mm -hmm. when you get your first party and you, and you feel like you've done everything and you don't make a sale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, right. And you don't make a sale. So to the point of gas going up and you don't make a sale, it's like, okay, you have to be compensated for something because this is a lot of stuff to love. This is a lot of stuff to do. And then I have to, I had to uh, come, I had to put a charge on it because they were asking me to play games. And then some people will request certain games or whatever. Well, I'm using my money to play the games. I'm using my money to buy the alcohol or the string or the balloons or whatever. And I'm like, I'm you doing all of this and I don't make anything. I was like, no, I have to stop that. Okay, cool. And, um, and um, I ran into a lady named um, Michelle Rawls. And, really? <laughs> I ran into Michelle Rawls. And I can't remember how I ran it. I saw her. She had an ad or something. And she does uh, fun parties. And she was and she was like, oh, um, she was a she's older than me. But she um, and I just went to her and I was like, hey. What do you do or how does that work and can you help me out? Cause she um she was to the point like she was saying that she could help me get toys. That's what it was for a discounted price wholesale. So mm -hmm. I was reaching out to her. And so then she took me up under her wing and was like, Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And no ma'am. You know, she was teaching me the the ropes and okay. I learned her. Okay. Okay. So what's the going rate now for a fun party? One hundred and fifty to two hundred. Okay, and that does it doesn't matter how many guests or any of that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, 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 mm -mm. great. Well, the um, bigger. <clears throat> what were you about to say? Now, and now I take that back. It does. Um, if you have a big party and you require a lot of games, yes, it does go up because I have to buy material for those games. Okay. Or now I have extended expanded it now to um, a pain and sip. Sometimes mm -hmm. I offer that. But um, people are still kind of finicky and trying to be cheap. And But you have to just stand your ground. And if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. And if they're not, they're not. That's right. That's right. What is the wildest toy that you've ever sold? Um, the wildest that I've ever sold was the one, um, cause I don't, I don't know what it does. <laughs> I, thought, I was like, I can't figure it out. And she's like, I know what it does. And uh -oh. it was the lady we was at your party and it, um, right. I was at your party. I'm not going to tell nobody else. Um, but, um, it had three three heads on it and it had spikes on it and it twirled around and I just couldn't understand why people want something spiky with three heads on it. 
But that was then. But now, uh, well, that's not the wild, but the hottest tour now is out. It's called The Rose. Girl, listen to me. They need to <laughs> stop playing with this foolishness. In a minute, women are, <laughs> these poor brothers going to be struggling. I My nephew told me, mm -mm. he was like, no. He was like, TT, I'm throwing it out the door. <laughs> I just watched the video to see how, you know, they demonstrated how it, I said, no, you're kidding me. Oh, wow. Look at her. Look at her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Ew. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nope, 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 not doing it. Not. <laughs> I'm a support. Hey, fellas, I'm. I got y'all back. I'm not gonna fall. I'm not gonna fall. I'm just hold what I got, <laughs> baby. Hold what you got and add that to it. That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. So, how does your yeah. husband feel about the business? Huh? How does he feel about it? My husband, you know what? He's really, uh, he's been supportive about it. He's never, he, because he, he tells his, <laughs> he tells his coworkers and his friends and stuff about, you know what I'm saying, about it. So he, he, and like he tell people, <laughs> he used to tell people, um, she was doing it before I, I met her. He was like, I didn't think it was. He said at first I had to get used to being in a house full of dicks. That's what he would say. But um, <laughs> but um, other than that, he was like, I'm just. He was like, she was doing it before, and that's her business. She making money off of it. anything. She making money off of you know. He was just. He didn't mind. He went along with the flow. So do do your children know? Hmm. Do your children know? They know my daughter. My son knows he's eighteen. Okay. And um, my daughter says, "Mama, that's her. That's them. That's them. Uh, what she say? That's them um, adult toys. I got to go in my room. Like, yeah. <laughs> when I shouldn't come in, I use the spray and everything out on the floor. She's like, I know, Mama. I'm finna get my stuff so I can go in my room. So, yeah, they know. They know it's adult toys, and he okay. knows what it is. Cause they make him help me. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So, um, what what type of legacy are you looking to leave for your children? I know when we have ex me, I have two kids as well. I have a, a son and a daughter, and distinct personalities, but they know what their mom does. They know all. Of, I'm always all over the place. When you think about what type of legacy you want to leave for your children, what do you think about? I want to leave them with. I, uh, <laughs> my husband says I'm a hard worker and a go getter. Um, yeah, I want to leave them with that as well, but I do want to, them to, um, as well as that, is to leave, uh, to show them and to teach them how to also um, save and to invest. So that's my legacy. Cause um, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of he is so tripping right now while I'm on this thing. <laughs> So um, I kind of want them to, you know, to learn that aspect of it, especially my son, because he's older. So I kind of I'm kind of iffy about like, oh, I can leave the business to you and you can take over. He was like, Mama, uh -uh. he was like, I could probably get somebody to run it. But I don't know about that. One. Right. And I was right. like, I understand. Because, yeah, I, I, as they say, it's an acquired taste. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, I understand. But I do want them to understand that. Hard work stuff don't come easy, and I do want them to to know that their mom, this is what she did to make it work. That she did with you know to make it do what it do. Very cool. Um, just one last question. So, as far as you and your husband goes, how what type of goals have you all set for the near future? Um. Well, um, he's trying to get his. He has a. A t-shirt business he's trying to get off and going but i am trying to as of recently get my business going as far as um i want to do um a mobile store so i'm investing into uh um, like a party van and i'm gonna make it a store and i'm just gonna park adult and, toys. And do, hmm? adult toys 
for adult toys. Yeah, I'm gonna have me a sex shop on the go. So yeah, I call it mobile madams. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You can just pull up. Mm-hmm. And I can tell people because I don't have a like people always inbox me or um I could ship things, but then some people are like, no, I don't want you to ship it. I want it now. And you know, it's you so leery of having people come to your house and um and, and then trying to meet people late and I'm like, I'm a mom, you know, I'm a wife, I'm ready to go home. When I get out of work, I don't really want to meet nobody. Right. After a certain time, and and then some people are li- they people are being crazy now because like one lady uh like she wanted a toy and it was ten dollars and I don't know why she thought that I was gonna bring it to her. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna even tell you that story. I'm not gonna do it. Either you gonna come get it or not. I can refund you your money. Then people are like, well, I sent you the money already. Okay, I'll hold it as long as you need me to hold it because you sent your money. I don't have that problem. Nah. <laughs> so, okay, so um, even with that, if you do the mobile sex shop, that's still going to require that you do traveling to their locations, correct? Well, not so much as locations. I just came up with in my mind that on um, certain, you know, like um, like those um, food trucks, they set up, you know, in a nice area. Oh, That's what I would be. Mean. Okay, so mobile matters will be in such and such spot between such and such and such. Okay, cool. All right, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Ma- That's like I, can see you. I can see you pulling up your party bus in the midst of the food truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ready to do it. I said the same thing. <laughs> yeah. oh, that is so ingenious, though. That is a very great idea. Well, I am speaking that that is going to happen for you. I, what is the van going to look like? What's it going to look like? Have you visioned that already? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do. I wanted to have an in inside that old feel like um, a Harlem night with the, I want, believe it or not, I want a small chandelier in there. I wanted to have velvet uh, <laughs> stuff in there. Um, and then on the outside, I was just going to do basically just a pretty name madams on the outside and just put novelties on it. I wasn't going to do nothing raunchy because I don't want to pull up next to nobody and somebody's kid be like, mama, exactly. what is that? On the I can't believe she did that. Or, no, but it, it'll say adult not in novelties and it'll just be my name, but in the inside, you know, you gotcha. can come on. Okay. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. So if there are people listening and they want to have a fun party or they want to order things, how can they find you? Well, you could go to uh, Facebook. I have two pages on Facebook, which one is Tanya Gilmore. And then the other is Tanya Gilmore Bowie, like my name at the bottom. You can always inbox me. Or you could go to my website, which is www.madamsarray.com, M-A-D-A-M-S-A-R-R-A-Y.com. And you can locate me there if you need to uh, get have a party or you want something. Or you just, if you need have a question, it's still like a chat box there and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. Give us that web address one more time. It is www.madamsarray.com. Okay. And when you say array, A R R A Y, A R R A Y dot com, M A D A M X. Yeah. All right. Great deal. Well, Tanya, I'm glad we. I finally got you on the show, child. I know. <laughs> well, I am very excited to see you about what the near future brings. Um, keep your calendar open for July 31st. We'll talk in more detail later. Um, (laughs) but it's good to hear from you take care of yourself love on your husband and your kids and I hope we talk soon All right, I love you (laughs) (laughs) okay bye so again refreshing I hope that one of the things that relationship rhetoric does is help to release the taboos about putting yourself inside of a box and what you are and are not able to do. We are moms. We are daughters. We are sisters. We are educators. We are nurses. We are so many things. We're administrators, but that does not limit us and what else we can do with our lives. We can embrace 
our sexuality and realize that we have the ability to help others. That allows us to empower others and they see us grow and they see us sprout. And that gives them the courage. If she can do it and she has children and she has a daughter, then I can do it. So I'm hoping that listening to these people's encouraging stories will motivate you to push yourself regardless. As long as you're not out here breaking the law or hurting anybody, whatever your dream is, the best way to see if it'll come into reality is to take a leap, invest in yourself, invest in your vision and see what happens. The worst that can happen is you fall and you scrape your knee. If you're my age, I got plenty of bumps and bruises on my body, but I'm still here. I am still going. And every time I have a dream or a vision, I'm pushing to see, hey, is this one going to come alive or not? So I'm hoping that everyone out there at the sound of my voice, if there's a dream that you've been sitting on, if there's a vision that you've not been nurturing, take the time today to see what the next step is to make your dream come true. I am unapologetically Angela. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace love and dream big.